Hello everyone. So in this first pre-lecture tutorial for chapter 14, we're going to be taking a closer look at chemical reaction rates. Um, this is very much centered on the second section of chapter 14. I'm leaving it to you to actually read the first section regarding factors that affect chemical reaction rates, and we'll discuss that section of the book tomorrow. Um, but I wanted to sort of give you a little bit more of an in-depth look at rates of appearance and rates of disappearance of species in chemical reactions and how we can relate those minor rates, if you will, to the overall reaction rate. So let's first develop a few conventions, okay? Suppose for a generic chemical reaction like the one I'm showing you on this slide, where essentially I am reacting A moles of A with B moles of B, and that's going to give me C moles of C and D moles of D. Well, we can write shorthand mathematical notation to represent rates of appearance of products as well as rates of disappearance of reactants. And the way that mathematical set of symbols sort of comes together is the following. If I wanted to show the rate of appearance of product C, the way that I would calculate that, again, is the way that I would calculate any rate. Basically, I would take a ratio of the difference of the two variables that I'm interested in tracking. And so, for a chemical reaction, basically, rates represent change in concentration divided by change in time. And so, the way it looks mathematically is if I'm looking at the rate of appearance of C, that would be the Greek letter uppercase delta for difference. So the difference in the molar concentration of C. So this set of square brackets surrounding a species, that's actually the molar concentration divided by the change in time. So delta T is the time change. Okay, uh, I can do something similar for the rate of appearance of product D. So this would be change in molar concentration of D divided by the time change. I could also write these same sets of symbols for the rate of disappearance of reactant as well. So for A, that would be the difference in the molar concentration of A divided by the time change. But since this is a rate of disappearance, then basically I would need to assign this rate a negative sign to show that this particular species, its concentration is dropping. Also note that since this is a rate of disappearance, then what that means is the concentration of A should decrease over time, which means that the difference in the molar concentration of A should be a negative number. Okay, if that's the case, then basically when that negative number is multiplied by this assigned negative sign, then the rate overall would actually be a positive number. Now, I could also write a similar abbreviation, if you will, for the rate of disappearance of B. That would be negative change in molar concentration of B divided by the molar concentration, I'm sorry, divided by the time change. And so one thing that we haven't really discussed is, well, what happens with these stoichiometric coefficients? How do they fit in? Well, in order for us to really understand how those stoichiometric coefficients fit in, to piecing together reaction rates, then I need to actually move away from this hypothetical reaction and consider some real reactions instead. So let's have a look at this reaction right here. All right, I have got methanol reacting with hydrochloric acid. That's going to give me chloromethane and water. And it turns out that for this reaction, the rate of disappearance of the hydrochloric acid is negative 3.86 
times 10 to the negative third molarity per minute, or molar hydrochloric acid per minute. So that would mean negative change in concentration of HCl, since we're dealing with the rate of disappearance over the time change, is equal to negative 3.86 times 10 to the negative third molar per minute. Okay, now let's put together the rates of appearance or disappearance for the other species in the reaction. So if I take a look at the other reactant in the equation, the methanol, then since the stoichiometry here happens to be one to one, notice coefficients of one understood in front of each formula, then that means that the negative changing concentration of methanol over the time change should also be negative 3.86 times 10 to the negative third molar per minute. Okay, but what about the products now? So the rate of appearance of the chloromethane, again notice stoichiometric coefficients of one understood all the way across, that means that this should also be 3.86 times 10 to the negative third molar per minute. Again, because of the one-to-one -one mole ratio of the stoichiometry. Similarly, the rate of appearance of water should equal the change in the molar concentration of water divided by the time change. And again, because of the one-to-one -one mole ratio, then this should also be 3.86 times 10 to the negative third molar per minute. Now, when we consider the reaction and its rate overall, then what that means is the overall reaction rate, so I'll just write that as rate equals, where again, writing the rate in this way, where I just write this word as opposed to one of the symbols that I've mentioned before, this represents the overall reaction rate that should be 3.86 times 10 to the negative third molar per minute. So basically, this rate represents the rate at which this entire overall process in the chemical equation, how quickly that process actually takes place as written in the balanced chemical equation. So notice what it is. It's a way of sort of summarizing each of these individual rates of appearance or disappearance in one number that represents the entire chemical equation. Now, for this example, it ended up being pretty simple because the stoichiometry was one to one all the way through. However, as we well know, that's not always the case, and a lot of times stoichiometry can get far more complicated. So let's take a more complicated example. So suppose I have this reaction now. So I've got two moles of dinitrogen monoxide, three moles of oxygen gas, those two reactants are going to be combined and I'm going to get four moles of nitrogen dioxide. Now again notice that the chemical equation is balanced and we're also told that the rate of appearance of the nitrogen dioxide is 7.34 times 10 to the minus third molar per minute. So basically that is the change in concentration of the nitrogen dioxide divided by the time change, that's 7.34 times 10 to the minus 3 molar per minute. And so let's relate this rate of appearance of the nitrogen dioxide to the rate of disappearance for each of the reactants in the equation. And really the way to do that is very similar to the stoichiometry problems that we did all the way in the beginning of the year. I'll demonstrate. So 
we're going to try and figure out the rate of disappearance of the dinitrogen monoxide. Right, this is what I'm trying to find, that number. And again, since this would be a rate of disappearance, then basically there should be a negative sign assigned. So that means that this number is going to be negative on the other side when I find it. But basically, let me start with the number I was given, 7.34 times 10 to the minus 3. And I'm going to expand the units of molarity. So if you remember, capital M is molarity, and that's moles per liter. So that means that if I'm going to rewrite that unit expanding the units of molarity, then that would be 7.34 times 10 to negative 3 moles of nitrogen dioxide divided by liters times minutes. Now the reason I expanded that is because now I've exposed the moles of nitrogen dioxide in the numerator of this value that I was given. And so if I'm going to convert that to a rate of disappearance for the dinitrogen monoxide, now I can just set up a mole ratio. In the balanced chemical reaction, 4 moles of nitrogen dioxide correspond to 2 moles of dinitrogen monoxide. And my units would cancel. And if I do this math on a calculator, basically what I get is, again, assuming that this is a rate of disappearance, as I've shown here, then basically this would be negative 3.67 times 10 to the minus third molar per minute. And that is my rate of disappearance of dinitrogen monoxide for this reaction equation. I can do it again if I'm trying to find the rate of disappearance of the oxygen gas. And so if I do that again, then that would be 7.34 times 10 to the minus third moles of the nitrogen dioxide divided by liters times minutes. All right, I'm going to use the mole ratio between nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. So that is 4 moles of nitrogen dioxide for every 3 moles of oxygen. All right, if I go ahead and do that math, I get negative 5.51 times 10 to the minus third molar per minute, and that's going to give me the rate of disappearance of oxygen gas for this reaction. Now suppose I want to figure out my overall reaction rate. Well, the way to do that, once again, is consider this balanced chemical equation to represent one mole of the reaction taking place. All right, then what I can do is say starting from the rate of appearance of the nitrogen dioxide, basically 7.34 times 10 to the negative third moles of nitrogen dioxide divided by liters times minutes, I'm going to create a mole ratio between the nitrogen dioxide and the reaction itself as written in the balanced chemical equation. And in one of these balanced chemical equations, there are four moles of the nitrogen dioxide. So canceling out my units, then if I do this math, I end up with 1.84 times 10 to the negative third molar per minute. All right, or one fourth of the rate of appearance of the nitrogen dioxide as a product. I can actually go and repeat that calculation for each of these rates 
of disappearance for each of the reactants. So for example, for the nitrogen dioxide, I'm sorry, for the dinitrogen monoxide, basically if I go ahead and repeat that calculation, then it was negative 3.67 times 10 to the negative third moles of dinitrogen monoxide divided by liter per minute. And I'm going to go and I'm going to do the same. I'm going to create a mole ratio between the number of moles of dinitrogen monoxide and one of the balanced chemical reaction equations for this process. Go ahead and cancel my units and do the math. And if I do that properly, you'll see that I get negative 1.84 times 10 to the negative third molar per minute, or negative one half the rate of disappearance of the dinitrogen monoxide for the reaction equation. And then if I could do it once more for the oxygen. If you recall for the oxygen, basically the rate of disappearance for the oxygen was negative 5.51 times 10 to the negative third moles of oxygen divided by liter per minute. In one balanced chemical reaction equation, there are three moles of oxygen, so three moles of oxygen for every one mole of reaction, that's going to give me, once again, if I do the math, negative 1.84 times 10 to the negative third molar per minute. So that is negative one third. The rate of disappearance for the oxygen. So basically the rate of reaction for this particular reaction is 1.84 times 10 to the negative third molar per minute. All right, but that's also equivalent to 1 fourth the rate of appearance of the nitrogen dioxide. It's also equal to negative one-half the rate of disappearance of the dinitrogen monoxide. It's also equal to negative one-third the rate of disappearance of the oxygen. Notice that for each of these basically it is the sign convention that we discussed before, so rates of disappearance have negative signs. And in order for you to actually get the rate of reaction expressed overall, you have to divide the rate of appearance or disappearance for the species by its corresponding stoichiometric coefficient. So now that we've discussed this, all right, try and work on the follow-up assignment. We'll clarify any outstanding questions tomorrow in class. And as always, if there are any questions, by all means, reach out to me via email or speak to me in school tomorrow. Have a good night.